Hi, welcome back to my lab. Today I will start a series of videos concerning this thing. This thing is called the MAD. MAD? 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 The magnetic anomaly detector. This thing is used to detect a minute change of the Earth's magnetic field. So this permits to detect, for example, submarines from an aircraft. This thing is generally located on the rear of the aircraft. We can see on that image the location of this unit, which is on the rear of the tail here, this protuberant thing. There are different versions of this instrument. This one is the ASQ504. You can see the reference of this device. This one is quite modern. It uses actually an OPM, an optically pumped magnetometer. This thing is normally connected to a calculator computer. You can see this thing here, so we can see the head. It is what I have. And normally it is connected to a computer system. In the first episode, we will do a teardown of this thing. Not totally, because I don't want to destroy the head here. And after that, I will try to design a small computer in order to get it work. I think it is not impossible. So first, in order to understand everything of this device, I will need to do a reverse engineering of all the boards which are on the rear of this instrument. I think it is not very complicated. But of course, the main interesting thing is the head itself. But you can see that there is something loose inside this thing. So I think there is mechanical damage. So first, I think I will need to repair this thing. Okay, I found it. You can see. A losing gear here so as you can see uh, this thing can be orientated so we can see that we have uh, three Helmholtz coils and normally this is the three axis magnetometer so the goal is to orient the head in order to null the magnetic field on the two other axes and in that case the last sensor is oriented along the magnetic field so we should have two servo controls in, in order to orient the head Okay, so we can see the twisted wires here. The twisted wires permit to avoid the creation of a magnetic field by the DC current which flows through these wires here. You can see that we have three coaxial cables and on the rear there is a connector, a typical circular connector. There is a dissipator here, there is a linear regulator, 100. 17, the dead code of this thing is 84, and we can see some fit through capacitors for EMC purposes. First, let's remove the head plastic cover in order to see if we can repair this thing. Okay, so this is the losing gear, and as we can see, it is destroyed. Some teeth are missing. So this will be complicated to repair, and the shaft is broken actually. And as you can see, I can hear a motor rotating on the other side of this thing. So we should have two motors on the rear assembly here, on that side. And we should have long shafts. So this avoids the, the interference with the magnetic fields created by the motors. This thing can rotate really, so I think that the gear should be attached to something else, which is normally, I think it is compatible to this one, no it is not, so this is for the small one, so we can see that we have also another, I don't know the name of this thing, but it is, okay it is compatible with this one. 
I think it will be very difficult to repair this thing. Okay, so let's have a look on the other side. I will replace the cover momentarily in order to have a protection. Yeah, we can see on that board uh, there is a coaxial cable here. So let's remove this board. Okay. So this is a very simple board, except on that little box here. So this is an IC with an obscure reference. So this is the military part. We can see the standard 883. So this is an I1-387. Dead code 87. I will try to find the data sheet. So this part is from Harris. And there are several transistors and passive parts to N3904. This is a classic NPN transistor. And we have four Jan TX to N22, 22, and 2907. So we have two 2907 and two 2222. So this seems to be a full bridge. And we can see that these two bases are connected together. Here, this one and this one. All these big parts are coils, I think. And there is a conformal coating on that board. Okay, so this is a short circuit. These three things are coils. Okay, and there is this little shield. I mm, don't know how to remove. Oh, yes, I need to remove these two screws. There is nothing very exciting inside. Just two transistors. 3904. And the other one. 3904 as well. I don't know if this thing is a resistor. The black part here. RTH22. Can be a resistor or it can be an inductor also. But I don't know. It's connected to ground. Uh -huh. 98 ohms. This is probably an accurate resistor of 100 ohms. Yeah, it is written ES101J. And this is an SMD capacitor with leads. There is another one here. Okay, let's have a look on one other board. This one, for example. And we can see that there is a burn-in sticker. Oh, it is not a power supply. Look at that. So this is a high frequency amplifier. Well, this is interesting. So we have two power transistors. MRF 315A. And we have one part here, an IC, which is a GM38510. What is important is a second number. Uh, this is uh, slash 110058cc. That code 87. So this part is from Retheon, maybe. So this is interesting. As you can see, there is no coaxial input, so we just have an output here. Uh, this is maybe an oscillator. The output is here, obviously. So we have the collector of this transistor with this inductor, this capacitor. And then we have decoupling here, so the power supply is here, obviously. And there is this LC network in order to adapt the impedance. There is an inductor here, so the input is here. And uh, no, this is not the input, sorry. You can see the data sheet of this transistor. Output power can be 
45 watts at 150 megahertz. So this is the pin out of this transistor. Okay, so the collector is the pin with a cut here. So this is this pin here. Okay, and this one, the output is here. So it is strange because we can see that the two inputs are more or less connected together because the input is here of this transistor and this one is here. So we can see that between these two inputs we have a coil, capacitor, capacitor, coil. And the output of this one is here. So there is a decoupling capacitor here. I will do a reverse engineering of that board. And this is something strange. Okay, so let's see the last one. Now we have uh, yes, so this little board and uh, this one here. So let's have a look on this one first. Okay, so I think I need to remove the two screws on the rear. We have here four power transistors. There is an OP27, a low noise op amp. There is another one, and this is an AD5300 22 with military specifications. So this is maybe a multiplier AD5322. So there is a coil here, and uh, we have two parts which are TL. 084. So these are classic quad op amps. And this board is interesting. And we have uh, this capacitor. So this one has seen better days, it seems. You can see that uh, these capacitors uh, have high temperature specifications. So this one is 125 degrees. Or this one 85 only. Uh, this one is 125 degrees. Uh, these two capacitors. These are the same family, probably. I don't see the brand of this thing. The last board is this small board here. Okay, we can see these black cylinders. I think these are the motors for the servo controls. Let's see if we can remove this thing to get access to the motors. You can see an inner shaft and an outer shaft. Next step will be to do a turn-down of this head because I think, like you, I would like to understand how this thing works and what is inside and maybe if this thing is not repairable I would like to buy another one maybe with two faulty units I can get one complete which can work That's all for today Thank you for watching and see you next time for the second episode Bye bye